Yeah, yeah. Are we doing this live or is it? Oh, these things. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for um, coming here just to really acknowledge and celebrate what I think is a really important day in Queensland. Can I start by respectfully acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we gather today? I'd like to specifically uh, acknowledge Gerhard Pearson, who's the executive director of uh, Balkanoo Cape York Development Corporation and someone who's been a part of this project for my entire life and, and longer than that, so has a, a great deal of knowledge to be able to share. Uh, and also, of course, uh, Richie Ahmet, who's here, and uh, James Fitzsimmons, who's from the Nature Conservancy, who's been a critical uh, player in uh, making sure that the state government could acquire additional money from the Weiss Foundation to be able to make this really important acquisition. We've also got um, Dad Coatman uh, and Andrew from Conservation Groups in Queensland, which is fantastic. So really, uh, the announcement today, the Palaszczuk government has purchased over 131,000 hectares of land in far north Queensland. This is the largest acquisition for conservation that we have made in the last 10 years. And what it will do is unite uh, around a million hectares of land that is Aboriginal land and protected area for future generations. Uh, the Bramwell Station and uh, Richardson Station will be jointly managed and through our Cape York uh, Peninsula Resolu Resolution Program uh, we'll be working with traditional owners talking around what the next stages are to turn this land into Aboriginal freehold land and to National Park. Uh, this is a really critical milestone in what has been a really long partnership over many years with successive Labor governments and First Nations people. And I uh, just want to acknowledge the many, many years of work that has gone into today's celebration and the huge amount of people that have been a part of this project in the background. Uh, we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for their advocacy and their work. And someone who has been a part of that every step of the way has been Gerhardt. And I'll hand over to him now to say some words and we might do questions at the end if that works. Thank you, Minister. This is a very important acquisition. It is strategic. Uh, it is, I say, the gateway to Cape York. Uh, it provides for, uh, I think, a regional base for economic opportunities uh, for land management, for ranges and the state and the traditional owners to look after the vast uh, areas of land in northern Cape York. And we are very thankful that uh, the Queensland Government has committed to this acquisition and has committed to ongoing discussions with the traditional owners of this area in negotiating the kind of land use settlements that will ensure the kind of economic aspirations and conservation management needs um, of this very important area. I just want to say this culminates, I think, an important milestone for the Indigenous leadership. Uh, we have, we started the campaign in 1990 and it was about getting land back, uh, moving our people and our young people from the reserves which were dotted around the coastlines of Cape York to get their feet and footprint back into areas where once our ancestors enjoyed, uh, lived, grew families, hunted and fished. And it was with the lab with su successive Labor governments we were able to negotiate a pathway through, uh, you know, with specific legislation that supports um, the underpinning of these various tenures, including conservation tenures, but also providing for, as the Minister has said, uh, large um, amounts of um, Aboriginal freehold. So since 1990, 
93, uh, the, the Goss government, the Beatty government, Labor government, the Bly Labor government, and now we're seeing with this current government through uh, Premier Palaszczuk and Minister Scanlon's commitment, this long history of commitments towards conservation uh, management and conservation preservation and opportunities and land justice for our people. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. First off, Minister, thank you from everybody in Cape York. Uh, I also want to thank the Premier, because I think the Premier is carrying on. We were a father, was a rural communities minister, then he went to primary industry, and I think she's carrying on that legacy for him. So this is quite significant. This is something that everybody talks about, you know, from when the elders were alive, were passed on their knowledge to the current generation and the next generation to come. This is something that's so significant in the hearts of our people that it'll never be forgotten. Forgotten, sorry. So, Minister, we'll be rejoicing in Cape York. We will be. And our spirits will be rejoicing also on this handbag. This is going to create so much opportunity for our people that it won't be funny. And you know, talk is cheap. Everybody says that. But actually doing what you've just done, you and the government just says volumes in the eyes of blackfellas. Thank you. Well, thanks, Minister. Uh, the Nature Conservancy is absolutely delighted yeah. to be financially contributing to the acquisition of two globally significant properties, Bramwell and Richardson Stations. Cape York is an iconic part of Australia, and these two properties epitomise the Cape. They're large, they're intact, um, they have a range of ecosystems from rainforests through to savannas, uh, nationally important wetlands, including these really unique sinkhole wetlands. Um, they have a range of threatened species on the property, including Australia's most intelligent bird, the palm cockatoo. They protect headwaters of streams and rivers that run into the Great Barrier Reef, and many of the ecosystems on the property are actually really important carbon sinks. These properties fill a missing gap in the jigsaw of Northern Cape York. They're surrounded on multiple sides by indigenous, private and public protected areas. And due to the size, 132,000 hectares, they're going to offer a really important and resilient, robust landscape in the future with climate change. We're delighted to see um, this land is going to be in many ways returned um, to Indigenous ownership um, for management and conservation of the cultural and natural values on the property. So the Nature Conservancy again is very delighted to be contributing financially US uh, $2.36 million uh, to, the, to the purchase of this property, um, including a very generous donation from our partners, the Weiss Foundation and the Art Into Acres Initiative. Uh, we look forward to this being um, one of many future collaborations with the Queensland Government into the future. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, that's okay. oh, sorry, It is freehold land, like the one we enjoy, except that it can never be disposed of. Uh, it is a freehold, inalienable title, and it's only this house, the, the joint house, um, government and the opposition, that can come together to extinguish, impair um, or amend freehold. So uh, it... Uh, and, you know, we don't think that's going to happen. And it provides for uh, these lands to be held in trust, but it also provides for these lands to be negotiated for uh, economic, uh, uh, environmental and other land uses, uh, community land uses. Pardon? Yeah, look, it's the, it's the only path, roadway, to the tip of Cape York. And right in the middle of this property is 
an established uh, roadhouse um, that has been used as a camping ground and provides a service. So there's potential just in terms of, uh, you know, uh, enhancing the, the services that tourists and the, the people of Cape York coming to and from um, could access. We hope that uh, we can be in a position to talk to government about uh, other uses, um, i.e. Uh, there is a huge need um, to have Indigenous and Queensland government ranges manage this huge area, both the land and the waters that encompass um, the tip of Cape York. And so this could potentially be uh, a significant ranger base, a land and sea operation that's there looking after um, the important ecosystems and the cultural sites uh, important to the state of Queensland and, and to the communities up there. Uh, just east of there is the beautiful Shelburne base and the, uh, the traditional owner groups there had uh, uh, negotiated with government uh, through an indigenous land use agreement under the Native Title Act to not have any mining. And that was a decision that traditional owners made. Um, of course, uh, this area includes uh, the Wutidi people along with others and I think just the demonstration of the significance of the Shelburne Bay areas uh, that was under threat to mining back in the late 70s and the 80s. This was our first collaboration with the Greens um, to, to prevent mining there and a few years ago the Queensland Government and traditional owners said we want no mining and uh, so that area is sterilized forever from mining. This particular area um, it's you know it, it's the leadership of those traditional owners at the moment there is no threat for mining. Um, the, the mining that will happen is the opportunities that come out of carbon and there is potential there um, and other tourism and other job and training opportunities for our communities looking after the country. And th those details have yet to be worked out, of course. I don't want to preempt um, anything. I'm, it's not my country. I'm just happy that they are given an opportunity by a long standing relationship. This has been a partnership that's been very valuable. Um, the ALP government has working with uh, many leaders of Cape York for 32 years to ensure that there is a just outcome of Aboriginal justice in return of land by way of Aboriginal freehold and the need to ensure that there are protections through national parks and other conservation regimes. I just want to say, and I didn't mention this, but the conservation movement by and large have been integral um, in this process since '93, when the <laughs> uh, in the Starkey campaign, um, we brought the conservationists in after the Franklin and the Daintree um, uh, battle around the dam and the Daintree development to come up and help us protect Aboriginal land from sale to. Um, to um, develop us from America. And so we forged that long alliance. Yes, we've had our disagreements from time to time, but a few years ago we got together and said, listen, there is a need. The job is not finished. The, in terms of our interests, we have a land reform objective. Uh, it, it is about getting Aboriginal land back, getting the young little ones to walk and swim and camp on their country. At the same time, we negotiate with the state um, 
appropriate conservation outcomes. And, you know, in this very house in 2007, uh, Peter Beatty uh, made a special law for Cape York. It, it's called the Cape York Peninsula Heritage Act. And that, that law is specific for Cape York and it provides for these types of acquisitions uh, to have a tenure uh, called Aboriginal freehold and for the consent makings around national parks. Um, and as I said, the, the, the Queensland Labor government, uh, the conservation groups, and there are many of them, and the leadership of Cape York a Aboriginal communities have had a long partnership, and I hope that that continues. Yeah, look, there's, it's really about tidying up the legislation, so it's, um, it's very technical in nature. It's really about making sure that under each of those pieces of ledge, it's consistent. Um, we have, of course, had circumstances, which is why we need to have legislation like this. I'd have to get, I'd have to get some, yeah, no, I'll have to find out how many instances we've had. We're happy to come back to you. So for this land, so the, the final uh, price paid to the landowner was $11.5 million, but acknowledging though that uh, the Weiss Foundation also brokered through the Nature Conservancy Australia has, um, has provided that contribution as well that, that was just spoken about. Uh, look, they can they can take some time. We want to make sure we get this right, and so traditional owners rightfully need to be properly consulted around what their aspirations are. We need to also make sure that there's conservation benefits as well, and so uh, that's one of the reasons we have the Cape York Peninsula Resolution Tenure Program, so that we can continue these discussions to make sure that we to make sure that everyone's aspirations are considered. And but but we can only do that because we've made this acquisition today. Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Chatting about the.